Good morning, Warlock. Hello. Hi. H how are you doing? I'm okay. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm on the beach. <laughs> yeah, but I thought that so you not in California, right? No, You're no, Flo Florida. 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 The opposite. So. For at your state, uh, you don't have to be quarantined yourself. You don't have to stay. Home. Not yet, not yet. But I think we're heading that way. Um, uh, there's not many people on the street, but it's probably not as strict as Europe. I, I talked to Carlos. You, you met Carlos, right? You met mm -hmm. Okay, he he said that uh, they he has to have a policeman take him to the hospital, <laughs> uh, escort. Uh, because you can't be on the street unless you're going for food or something, I guess, n you know, necessary. So, oh. uh, it's, no, it's not there yet. What, where are you guys at? Me? Um, my, I, I, uh, my country does not uh, announce to the faith free. I mean, faith free mean that we should close the country. We should not allow anybody to come in and it uh, means that it's widespread uh, for the virus around the countries and we don't know what is the source. So we suspect that everybody got infected. Right now they did not announce to that phase yet, but in pra practical, they um, uh, announced the rule for us to follow almost as same as we are in that stage. Yeah, okay. So uh, they- Can you move right around now, okay? Can you move around okay? Can you walk around or no? I uh, know, you can uh, Yeah, yeah, we still, I mean, because we are doctors. So of course that doctor and nurse, we still have right. to go to hospital work regular. But right. for the normal people, only ask for the, um, for the corporations that, uh, you should not go out and buy food or go across the borders to another province or yeah. they close nightclub or the like fitness okay shopping mall only the small supermarket that can be open yeah yeah you know it's funny uh, it's hit china iran and italy but it hasn't really hit thailand hard right and like some country like it's iran hard. And like Italy and like China, they for some reason they seem to get hit hard. It, it's hard because they estimate the number of the increasing the people who got infected for like um, three point three percent each day. So right now for these four days, it's doubling times of the people who got infected. Yeah. So um, for 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 now, that it seems like it double of the number of the people who got infected. So, and this cause of people in the country is like really scared and panic. Yeah. 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 So, panic. yeah. We, we, we haven't got panic yet here, here. Really? <laughs> well, well, people, uh, you know, I think some people like the time off. <laughs> really? You know, you know I mean, I mean, actually, I, I have like asked for uh, help for some people in the United States for the for the mass. Uh-huh. 
in the in the times that my country is like uh, cannot find the surgical mask because uh, I'm a surgeon and they launched the they launched the uh, guideline for us to follow that we allow us to use only one mask per day. Really? Yes, and it's, it's uh yeah I mean for like surgical and for, for, for me it's, uh, it's very difficult to do because uh, for the for the the blood so um I have asked some people in United States and they also told me that in their country they also uh, not enough number of math as well. No, well, in this country, there's a shortage of uh, testing kits. Uh, a lot of people are mad at the president because he didn't really get ready, you know, he didn't take it real serious. And, and you know, so they're trying to catch up with testing kits and masks and uniforms are behind. And ventilators are making a big call now for ventilators in New York. Uh, Oh, yeah. Yeah, because they think that that's a piece of equipment that really is going to be scarce if it gets bad. Yeah. Ventilators, the, the all things, ventilators, ventilators. Imagine. Yeah, the, most imagine. Scary, the, the most scary things is uh, if it's come to the shortage of the number for the medical staff. So as we are the surgeons, I mean, neurosurgeons, so maybe somehow that we have to get involved with that situations too. But our knowledge to manage all the ventilator ICUs have like um, compared to the infected, I mean, doctor, it's not enough. So, yeah. but thank God for me, because right now I, uh, I, uh, I uh, started my study to be a fellowship in neurovascular, so. Oh, where are you gonna um, go? Where are you gonna go? For, you gonna go for fellowship? Oh, now I'm continue. I I am continuing my fellowship since January. Oh, so okay. Still, but in Thailand, in, right? Yes, in Thailand for and Bangkok for and endovascular. Yes, oh, but good. right now, yeah, we, it seems like we lock locked down the uh, capital city. The backup is locked oh. down. Oh, okay. You don't want to go to uh, with Dr. Katro in Japan? <sighs> yeah, I want to, but it's I, I have to wait for them to announce the situation about Olympic Games first. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, oh, okay. Well, well, you just do what you need to do. That's all. Whatever. But, but uh, I don't it, think that if you want to be famous, I, I think if you want to be really famous, uh, you, you need to go to Japan. <laughs> If you want to be yeah, famous, famous, you want to be a famous neurosurgeon. You go to Japan. Come on, <laughs> come on, Marla. There's a there's a script here. You but gotta go to Japan. Easy. Yeah, but it's not easy to 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 travel now. You know, I I don't know for 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 how long. But right now, my country like locked down for like almost month right now, and right. I hope the situation. Oh, you won't, yeah, so you good. won't be. You won't, won't be. Yeah, no one's gonna be moving uh, too much. You know. Wow. It's really, this is like a science, you know, world, this is like a science fiction movie. That's real. Yeah, but I mean, real. It's, it's all, it, but the, the, the thing that is different because we are only in the beginning of the movie. There's no zombie. Yes, there's yes, I know. Before. We don't know yet. We don't know where the middle's even going to go. We don't know. Oh, God. But you know, it's going to, it's, you know, it's going to include isolation. You know that. You know that. I don't know. I, I did not realize that it's going to be this bad before. Everything changed. That I mean, I spent time to stay in my room for two days already. It's going to make yeah. me crazy. Mad. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Well, I, I think get into your art. You know, get into your art. Get into uh, studying. I, you know, for me, it's okay because yeah. this is what I do. Uh, online, so it's not a big adjustment for me. Uh, I almost, I welcome, I welcome, the, well, I don't mingle with people anyway, so it's not as if I'm a busy doctor and going Actually, here, going there. For the, for the telewide things, I uh, discussed with my team this morning, but I tried to uh, 
introduce Zoom? Yeah, I'll, I'll help you. I'll, I'll help you introduce Zoom to them. I, I know, I know, but they still seem to not understand. But it, it, it will in time because uh, as because the rule is just enough for a couple of days, so this, they're still in the shocking state. Maybe in a couple of days, I won't yeah. let you know. That maybe yeah, okay. You. Okay, uh, I think people, I can see it now. They're, they're more open to uh, using it. Uh, yeah. And I think it's going to get more and more open uh, because people will be communicating by computer, not by face. Not, you're not by face to face. Uh, well, that's where I think it's going to go. Maybe, you'll, the, you know, the Chinese are optimistic. You know, they say, well, we turned the corner, the neurosurgeons. But, you know, you don't know what, if that's true. <laughs> you don't know if that's just who's talking there. <laughs> you know, it's like uh, we turn the corner in Beijing. We think in April or May, uh, we'll, you know, things will get better, which was surprising to hear that optimistic outlook from China, which I hope is true. I hope it's, hope it's good. You know, okay, let's see, we have, who else here, Warlith? Uh, hello, uh, Saad, how you doing? And uh, Akeem and Laguerre, I'm coming in. You know, we have this resident from Africa, Warlith, that he comes to all of them. Lucindo, he comes to the Spanish ones. <laughs> Lucindo, are you there? He's a good guy, but yeah, more people are showing up, uh, and it's uh, it's fun. You know, it's really uh, I think uh, I think you're gonna like it. Uh, it's fun. It's it, you know you, you meet people and it's uh, you learn and stuff, and uh, it's good for you. You know, not that you do it because it's good for you, but hello, uh, Dr. Laguerre. Well, I guess everyone's, yeah, yeah. A lot of some people come. Don't they don't want to be introduced? They don't. They don't want, which is fine. You know, they can just watch. Yeah, people like to observe. But you know, Warlith, uh, it's a it's a pretty easy platform to to use. It's pretty straightforward, uh, so you can learn how to start your own. You know, if you want, if you want. Um, uh, if you really do much too much, much televising, you should get a paid account, which is fifty dollars a month. Um, but you don't have to. I think you can do do enough with just a free account. So yeah, I'll, I'll, yeah I don't think you'll have to get a paid account. I think a free account you can have, you know, webinars and meetings uh, and things. Yeah. But you know, there's a lot of videos on the website that tell you how to use it and stuff. It's, it's, it's pretty good. Are you okay? I, I heard you coughing sometimes. No, I, no, cough? I'm okay. Uh, yeah, I think I'm okay. But of course, everyone now pays very much attention. If you cough, don't call the police, yeah. Marlix. Marlix, don't call the police. Please. You know, like I heard a cough in Miami. <laughs> even, even I'm a doctor. I like, you know, buy my very own thermometer to measure my body temperature. <laughs> crazy. Well, well, you know what's scary? Yesterday, when I was when two doctors were presenting, they were coughing, and I thought to myself, "Have they done that before? I just haven't recognized it, or is it my paying more attention to coughing?" But two two presenters yesterday in Mexico, <laughs> they were. <laughs> and I thought, "Geez," but I, who knows? You know? Okay, Ipe will be here in a few minutes. Hello, everyone. Oh, Joanna's here. Hello, John. Oh, you're going to meet hey, Joanna hello. from Finland. Hola. Hello, hola. Como estas? Hola. Hola. Como estas? Oh, Kale. Hey, there, there's the Spanish, uh, the Spanish Kenyan neurosurgeon. <laughs> How are you doing, John? Good. How you been? I'm doing great. You remember Warlocks, right? No. Yeah. Your colleagues from Kenya. Is your camera working? Uh, sure. Yeah, your camera's not on. Okay, let me just start that. There you go.
Well, you're at work yeah. now. Are you at work? No, 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 no. I'm just staying at home. Oh, those headphones sound great. Quarantine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> after, after Professor Ipe. Yeah, he'll be here in a few minutes. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, Dr. Uh, Sam or Hose is going to give a case presentation on, on carotid aneurysm, I believe. So, with questions, with answers. Can you hear me, John? Yeah, I can hear you. So, after, after IP is done with his presentation, yeah, we'll do uh, three minutes, two MCQ questions re related to the topic. Okay. Uh, yeah, we can go where we want to go. I mean, we're the owners of this right. station. We're the owners of this station. <laughs> so yeah. uh, Sam is going to speak yeah. after him. I think I think I yeah. wants to speak for like a half hour. I think. And, and right. there's no real. I mean, it, it's kind of loose. He's going to present, and Sam is going to present. But I think this is going to grow to a daily thing, a daily meeting. <laughs> Because <laughs> some neurosurgeons have nothing to do. Here's I. Yeah, lots of free time, my friend. Yeah, which is rare, time. rare for a neurosurgeon <laughs> to have no work. Yeah. So you can study. You, you know, neurosurgeons always want to do something. So study something. So hey, I. John, when do we start? Uh, well, a few minutes. How are you doing? Sure, John. You're Pretty good, John. Are you at home? Yeah, we. Uh, I just came early today back. So I just did rounds. They, we had an emergency surgery, and then I came back home. Oh, okay. Okay, yeah. Um, yeah, this could turn into something good every day. I... Yeah, that'll be fantastic. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah uh, I think. Uh, yeah, people, as you know, people have more time at home, even neurosurgeons, which is rare. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's very rare for a neurosurgeon to be at home with nothing to do, imagine. <laughs> but that's not something that we will need to do. <laughs> you remember Warlocks, right? I... Thank you, pardon? You remember Warlocks, Warlocks from yeah, Thailand. I, I have met her in Thailand. Yeah. Yeah, we're, we're gonna hopefully she'll start teaching in Thailand, teaching neurosurgery. I'm trying to she, get her to. Yeah, she can draw very well. Oh, she great, great artist. Well. Yeah. She's a real artist. She could probably make a living as an artist. Yeah. Okay, Ip, anytime you're ready. I'm ready, John. Okay, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. Five, four, three, two, one. Good morning from Miami. This is Dr. John Bennett. We're broadcasting a new series of the Daily Dose of Neurosurgery Education. And, uh, neurosurgeons hate to be idle. So I is gonna do a, hopefully a daily series and we'll see where it goes. So let's introduce the panelists before we turn it over to Ipe. Uh, hello, Warlux. Warlux. Warlux, I hope you, can you introduce yourself? Go ahead, my, my name is Warlock. I'm a neurosurgeon from Thailand. Welcome. Welcome, Warlock. I'm a great artist. Dr. Selek. Yes. Hello. Yeah, Dr. Selek. Uh, yeah, how are you? Welcome. You're, we got, you're a frequent visitor okay, now. Things are, going, uh, things are going gloomy here, corona issues. So I'm here at home. Yeah, the, the whole world is getting isolated. Yeah. So, so yeah. welcome, Dr. Laguerre. Dr. Laguerre, are you there? Dr. Laguerre, perhaps not. Saad Javed. Saad, are you there? Go ahead. Saad, go ahead. I'm a neurosurgeon from Pakistan, resident of neurosurgery. Welcome, Saad. Pleased to meet you. Welcome. Pleasure. Okay, uh, Khalif. Uh, good afternoon, everybody from Nairobi. I'm Khalif Abdifata. Uh, neurosurgical trainee, fifth year resident. Welcome, I'm glad to be here. Welcome. Okay, uh, let's see. Uh, Ahmed Al Khalif, Akhtam, are you there? Or, or Al Alice Raiba, are you there? Uh, Joanna, you're. Uh, hello, Joanna. John. I'm, go, uh, go, go ahead. I'm a uh, 
fifth year medical student from Iraq. And oh. uh, I'm one of the students in uh, Dr. Samer's uh, uh, mentorship program. Welcome. It's great to be here. Welcome. Thank you. Welcome. Uh, okay, let's see, Joanna, are you there, Joanna? Joanna's, go ahead, Joanna. Hi, uh, greetings from Finland. Uh, my name is Johanna. I'm uh, doing my PhD at the moment and entering in one year the subspeciality doing skull base and tumors now, but my dream is always aneurysms. Like you can imagine because of I'm, I'm from Finland. So it's right. sort of like- <laughs> Land of Juha. <laughs> exactly, it's, uh, that's how it is usually. Aneurysms okay. and fins, we go together. <laughs> okay, well, welcome Joanna. Let's see, Thank uh, you. Uh, Ahmed oh, Mohammed, are you there? And anyone that has an, okay, go ahead. Hi, my name is uh, Ahmed. I'm a student, a fourth year medical student in the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland. And I'm one of uh, Dr. Samar al Amri um, students. And I'm delighted to be here in this lecture today. Welcome, welcome. Okay, did I Thank miss you. anybody? Did anybody not get introduced? It's important to network. Okay, uh, yes. go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, hi. Oh, it's Musindo, I forgot you. Yes, yes. Hello, I am Augusto Musindo, a neurosurgical resident of, of Mozambique. I'm doing residence in Maputo Central Hospital. Welcome, a frequent visitor. Okay, uh, okay, I, it's all yours and welcome. Hello, everybody. Good to see you on the first those daily dose of neurosurgery that's uh, john's name I, I like it see the thing is uh, i wanted this to be a completely informal discussion and when i mean discussion i i really imply discussion it's not going to be a delivery class lecture or something like that it's going to be an interactive program where you guys are going to ask me questions. I'm going to answer you. And it's my job to make all of you in this room understand about our classification and in that way, all about the carotid in the skull base. Now, I've done this class so many times, so many of you, even John may have heard it many times, but you know, in this, uh, in this, I would want to stress again that if you want to learn skull base, the most important structure in the skull base is the carotid. You need to be very, very clear about what is the course of the carotid. And unless you're clear, skull base is going to be very vague for you. So I've decided that I'm going to, I'm going to make you do this. I'm not going to precisely deliver a lecture, I'm gonna make you do this. All of you, all of you take a pen and a paper. If you cannot take a pen and a paper, take a smartphone and or go to the laptop, go into paint or something. Okay, and when you're ready, you tell me. Ready. Okay, ready? All right, let's start. Draw three lines, vertical three lines, three vertical lines. One, two, and three. Okay, draw the first line slightly above, the second line slightly below, and the third line slightly below the third second line. So three vertical lines in an order where the first line is, is slightly above, second line like that, and the third line like that. Did we get it? Um, well, the lines has to be on almost equal uh, 
for, for almost yeah, yeah. equal. So it shouldn't be like, see, um, I'm going to show you my chapter. So I'm going to show you three lines. First line, second line, third line. Okay. Yes, everybody. Yes, Professor. Right. So the first line is in the front. All right. So that's a vertical line. So name it C3. C3. Got it? Yes. Did you get it? Everybody? Yes. Yes. You know, I could have used a PowerPoint. I could have used um, some drawings. I could have, but the best thing is your imagination. You know, the best thing. And you must learn to use imagination and visualization. If you don't learn how to use it, you cannot be a good neurosurgeon. Okay. So learn three lines. I'm going to paint a picture with my words and you should understand this picture. So the first line is C3. Behind that line is C5. Behind that, the next line is C7. Did you get it? Okay. C5. Everybody? C7. Yes. Show me, uh, Khalif, show me your lines, please. Uh, no, sh uh, show me, please, once more. Go ahead, Khalif. Let me, let me spotlight you. The right side ones. Let me feature Khalif on this. How do you do it here? Uh, okay, Let's see here. There you go, okay. Let me spotlight, okay, pin video, okay, there we go, okay. Okay, is that correct type there? You uh, see it? Okay? No, you are there. You're on the screen, John. Oh, I'm on the screen. No, okay. Let me get. Okay, let me get myself off the screen. Unpin the video. Okay. Are you back on there, Khalif? Uh, Not yet. No. Nah, how do I pin you? Yeah. Now? Yes. Yes. I can see Khalif's lines. Okay. Yeah. Again, Khalif. Are they okay? C three is on top. C5 is slightly, just the reverse way, just the reverse way. Can you just show reverse. your ah. picture again? Okay. Everybody, everybody should uh, make oh, these okay. mistakes, okay? You see that what you have withdrawn oh. is C3, C5, C7. Just reverse it. Um, okay. On the top one is C3, yeah. C5, and C7. Just reverse it. C7, C5, C3. Show me that. The lower ones. That is right. So Every, C3 is right. front, C5 is behind, and C7 is back. Now connect C3 and C5 yeah, with yeah. a line. Okay, can you connect C3 and C5 with a line? No, the bottom part of C3 and the top part of C5. Okay, go <laughs> ahead, go ahead. The bottom part of C3. Yes, right. The same okay. way, connect C5 to C7. That is right. You have the carotid right now, so let, okay? Let me, let me start the whole thing one more time. Right. <laughs> hey, hello. Yes. Can I show my own? Okay. Yes, 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 yes. Please show. Yeah, let me yeah. spotlight show you. Me. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Yeah. Hold it up there to the camera. C3. There you go. Yeah. Hold it to the camera, please. Yeah. Try it again. Uh, for some reason, the camera shot's not going on there. Uh, Can I see, see that? Yeah, we can't. I don't know why his photos coming up rather than his picture. John, can you pin me up, please? Yeah, okay. You got it now? You got it? 
Okay. Can everyone, I see that? Can everybody C3? see that? Yeah. Uh, C5 and C7. He's connected C3 to C5 top and C5 to C7. You have the carotid right now. Okay. Now let me explain. Okay. All right. So the vertical lines, John, put, uh, uh, put uh, I mean, can you put uh, uh, Khalif on the screen again? Yeah, yeah, okay, let me try it. Yeah. Can I see your picture, Khalif? Can you see it now? Yeah, there you go. No? no, you can't see it? Yes, almost, all right. So this is yeah. a very easy way of understanding category classification. Let me tell you how. So C3, the vertical C3 in the front is paracellar carotid. The paracellar carotid. Okay. All right. C5, just behind the next vertical segment is paraclival carotid. And behind C5 is C7. That is parapharyngeal carotid or the vertical petrus, which comes from the neck, goes as vertical petrus, or the ENT guys call it parapharyngeal carotid. So you have parapharyngeal carotid, you have paraclival carotid, and you have paracellar carotid. These are the three vertical segments of extradural carotid. Now, what you connected as C3 to C5, that is paracella to paraclival is the horizontal intracavernous segment of the carotid. Horizontal intracavernous segment. Okay? So you have C3, that is paracella, C4, which is horizontal intracavernous, C5, which is paraclival, and after C5, what segment do you have? C6, which is vertical, which connects C5 to C7, that is the horizontal petrous carotid. And then you have parapharyngeal. Are you getting it, guys? Everybody? Yes, no. Yes, professor. Are you getting it? We'll Everybody getting it? You got it, Saad? Hello. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, Lucindo. Go ahead. Yes, yes. Everybody? I would like to, to know uh, between. Hello? Yes, hello, hello. Lucindo. Yes, yes. I, I would like to know uh, between C5 and C7. Uh, show me that what? picture again. Okay, let me try to spotlight Musindo. Hold on, just give me a second. Where do you go? Okay. Uh, Musindo, I think he dropped off there. Oh, no, there he is. Okay. Uh, okay, there you go. Can you see it? I, I, go ahead, Musindo, can you yeah. show it? Go ahead, Lucindo. Can you show? Put it in front of the camera, please. Yes. There we go. I don't know if you, you can see that. Put it close to the camera so we can see it. Well, the resolution is not the greatest. Can I, I don't think, really I don't, see it, Lucindo? No, yeah, the bandwidth kind of low. I don't think that'll work with Lucindo. Okay, Lucindo yes. is drawn it almost correctly. I can see the outline. He's almost done it correctly. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to show you the actual segments, okay? okay. Guys? Okay. I'm going to show you the actual segments. So I'm going okay. to turn my... Sign right. Sign so, that is C3. Can you pin... C5 and C7. So the C3... Can you put the IPE uh, screen, please? We can't see it clearly. Oh, okay. You want to see? You want to see? Uh, okay, let me. IPE, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Mm. Can you see me? 
There's not, Can hold on, I, hold on, I, let me get the, uh, okay, I'm having a hard time canceling the, the spotlight. I'm a, I'm a rookie. Uh, okay, I'm trying to cancel this. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, uh, hold on, I. Yeah, no problem. Don't worry. Take uh, your time. Okay, okay cancel. Uh, I think it's okay now. Uh -oh. I can see it. You can actually can do it for see my yourself. Screen? Okay, there you go. Yeah. Okay, I, I think it's okay now. Can everybody see my screen? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so that is C3. That is paraclinoid or paracella. You have C5. That is paraclival. And you have C7. That is parapharyngeal. So you have interconnecting C4, that is horizontal intracavernous, and you have C6, which is petrous. Everybody clear with this idea? Yes. 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 Okay. yes. Everybody? Yes. Yes. We're going to add a few things now. So between C3 and intradural, that is C2, I'm going to add anterior clinoid process. And parallel to C5, that is paraclival, I'm going to add the clivers. And on top of the clivers, I'm going to add the posterior clinoid process. So you have paracellar and paraclinoid carotid C3, C2 intradural, C4 horizontal intracavernous. You have C5, which is paraclival. I have added the clivers also there. You have C6, horizontal petrous, and C7, vertical petrous up to here, and then parapharyngeal here. So that's parapharyngeal C7, C6, C5, C4, C3, and intradural C2. You can see that between C4 and C3, I mean, between C4 and C5, you have a small artery coming from here. That is the meningohypophyseal branch of the cavernous carotid. The meningohypophyseal branch gives the artery of Cassinari and Bernasconi uh, and the tentorial, the tentorial artery. So this is very important in petroclival meningiomas and tentorial meningiomas. And I will show you later, I will show you where we have gone to the cavernous sinus and clipped off this artery. Okay, to get, to get into the cavernous sinus, I will also show you some other structures which will which will be of importance here. Give me a second. Hello? Yes. Roshan Aun Milstein. Tabe Aunus. Nene Garme Aunus. Garme Garme Chan. Right. We're going to the next picture where I've added one more structure. That is a petrolingual ligament, okay? So you've got the intradural segment. That is a paracellar or the paraclinoid segment, C3. You have C5 paraclival segment. You have C7 parapharyngeal segment. C6 is the horizontal segment, which is intrapetrous. And when the horizontal intrapetrous segment turns to the paraclival segment, laterally there is a ligament and that ligament is called the petrolingual ligament. You know, there is a nerve which goes along the C6. The C6 turns up to C5, but this nerve goes along and this is the foramen. What foramen is this? What foramen? Do you know anybody who does endoscopic skull base work, you will be surprised to see that there is a VDN nerve coming out and that is marking of which foramen? Lacerum. lacerum. Foramen lacerum. Foramen lacerum is not actually where the carotid comes in. It is the, it is the foramen where the C6 turns to become the C5. 
okay the horizontal intrapetus carotid turns to become the paraclival segment so the the gspn nerve which is which runs almost parallel to c6 it continues over on as vdn nerve and this vdn nerve is a marker of foramen lazarum and laterally you have the petrolingual ligament are you understanding clearly yes or no yes yes very clear yes right so let's get to the next picture now so we we are going to talk about few more nerves so now parallel just inferior to the clinoid you have two rings one is the distal dural ring and the proximal dural ring the distal dural ring is formed by the falciform ligament comes over the optic nerve comes over the clinoid and encircles the carotid there that is a prox that is a distal dural ring and the roof of the cavernous sinus the actual roof of the cavernous sinus is the proximal dural ring so these are two dural rings and parallel parallel to the c2 or in fact in the cavernous sinus they enter here you have the third nerve fourth nerve then you have v1 v2 and v3 so third fourth and v1 enter into the superior orbital fissure v2 enters in the foramen rotundum and v3 goes to the foramen ovale okay and as i said the gspn comes parallel to the c6 and then continues forward at the foramen lazarum while the horizontal intrapetus turns to become the c5 carotid or the paraclival carotid lateral to the c6 the horizontal intrapetus segment you have a tube going from the mastoid or the middle ear to the nasopharynx what tube is that eustachian tube eustachian tube absolutely that is a eustachian tube and then behind c7 you have cochlea so this is why in trans lab approaches if you see the cochlea the cochlea behind behind the cochlea is your facial nerve is your iam is your semicircular canals all that is okay but when you see cochlea you should know that just anterior to the cochlea is your parapharyngeal carotid so you have cochlea there you have eustachian tube there you have gsp and continuing as median there <coughs> you have the petrolingual ligament lateral to the carotid uh lateral to the carotid c6 c5 junction you have the gazerin ganglion you have v3 v2 v2 v1 you have cranial nerve 3 4 and by the way just medial to v1 is your cranial nerve 6 okay the cranial nerve 6 is just medial to v1 so you have now we are reconstructing things around this skeleton okay okay let's see now in the real picture you have c2 intradural you have c3 there so you have the third nerve coming in there so c3 is there c4 is going to be like that and c5 is there and then c6 will be intrapetrous okay horizontal so you have v1 v2 v3 gazerin ganglion here third nerve here this proximal dural ring distal dural ring all these things you have okay and the clinoid has been taken out so <laughs> you can watch um our videos again on the you know there is a there is another video if you type um ip cherian and dolink you will get uh, uh another video one of my lectures in uh, russia and you can watch that and then you can read right on what i just said also narayan janaki ram's uh, textbook chapter this is the textbook um i can send it on a pdf to you guys um uh, any one of you who is um, in uh, in the group in the whatsapp group i can otherwise add you to this whatsapp group where we share all these academic things and you can see this chapter this chapter also has a video 
um, maybe what I can do is you can take a photograph of this scan. You can take a photograph of this scan and you can go to that video directly. You can go to this video directly and you can uh, see the video of this approach. And uh, uh, you'll be able to, if you, if you scan it, you'll be able to get into it. And that, part, that place also has uh, the website, okay? So you can go into this website and you can see this video. And if you see this video, you'll be able to get into that approach where you can see each and every part of this dissection. Thank you very much for today. And if you uh, have any questions, send it on WhatsApp to me. I'll try and answer you. Thank you very oh, much. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much, Prof. Thank you so much. We really appreciate this. Uh, before we move to questions, I just wanted to, uh, John, if I can do some screen sharing. Sure, go ahead. And then, um, uh, I just some two questions related to the topic of today. Yes. Oh, why is it having issues? Hmm. Yeah. So let me try again. Yeah, we, this is uh, just what we were discussing. Yes. Uh, you can see the question? Yes, Tentora yes. Lottery. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we take uh, 60 seconds to answer the questions. Just, it was just so mentioned by- So can you by... tell me now, now that you know, what is that brand yes. that is, can you tell me? Uh, what is the answer? Which, it, it will be in C4. Yes, between C4 and C5, that is cavernous, right? Cavernous, so C4, yes. So C4, C5, and C3 is cavernous, all right? Yeah. So it yeah. is just not only cavernous. Cavernous is very non-specific. Um, you have to, it is the top of C4, horizontal intracavernous segment, and the junction of the horizontal intracavernous with, with the paraclival. Okay. With the that is where, yes. yep. Yeah. So that is where it yeah. is cavernous. It is, of course, it is cavernous. And so of course that is where are the. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. So the classification okay. is a little different. Uh, don't worry about any classification. Just follow this classification. Okay. All these classifications are very, very confusing. Okay. So you learn that C3, C5, C7. C3 is para, para, I mean, C3 is paracellar, C5 is paraclival, C7 is uh, um, parapharyngeal. So this is Fisher's classification, modification of Fisher's classification by me. It is most okay. easy. There is no need to yeah. worry about it and you can build the whole skull base around it. So no need to worry about any other classification. Uh, if anybody asks you about classification, this is published. This is published in a textbook so you can clearly go ahead and quote it. I haven't named it as Cherian's classification, but you can say yeah. that it's a modification of Fisher's classification. Perfect. So this is one of the past, uh, Euro, past paper from one of the European exams in the past years. Yeah. And um, so the, the answer is, as you said, is the, is the cavernous part. So the segments, yes. uh, now in your case, it's reverse. In, in your classification, I, I felt like it's yes. the reverse of, of this class. Yes, yes, absolutely. Classification. Okay. So, and, and what they wanted you to us to know is the, the different parts of the, of the ICA has different, yeah. uh, so some segments have uh, arteries, some don't have any, any arteries. So yes, it's true. the cavernous Absolutely. part and the tentorial, tentorial artery originates from the meningeal hypophysical trunk, which is in the cavernous part of the, of the, of the ICA. So these are just one of the questions I, 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 I was trying to present after the presentation. And yes. the meningeal hypophysical trunk has these uh, branches as well. It gives off an inferior yes. hypophysical artery to the pituitary. It gives yeah. the, the one you mentioned, and this is the one they want, Bernasconi artery, which is also called the te uh, tentorial artery. Yeah, and then the lateral, you must understand that. And the 
Yeah, you must understand that one is constant. That is the inferior hypophyseal artery is almost constant. Two, three, four are very small branches usually, and they become big only if there are patho there is a pathology. Okay, so the pathology makes the artery become bigger. Yeah, so I have seen uh, artery of Bernasconi and Casanari, really, really big arteries of Bernasconi and Casanari. If when we do petroclavial meningiomas or tentorial meningiomas, or sometimes if there is an, a DAVF involving the superior petrosal sinus, sometimes this is, this is supplied by this branch. So in that okay. case, these branches become big, otherwise uh, they don't. So uh, these are very, very small branches usually. And we usually don't see them in, in, in a DSA. It's or difficult to see them. Well, you can see them. If you look for them, maybe you can, but uh, uh, you know, it's difficult to see them. Yeah. So the artery we are discussing is a tentorial artery, which is a, a, a branch of the hypophyseal trunk and is leveled at C in this, uh, in this model. So the yes, answer excellent. will be the cavernous part. So yes. one more question. This one here, you can take a 30 seconds to read it. Yeah, uh, see, in this case, you must understand a little bit about the third now, okay? We can, I thought yeah. we can discuss the third now on another class if you want. I can discuss the localization of lesions of the third nerve with respect to vascular, vascular uh, territories, as well as say, for example, how will you identify a nuclear third nerve palsy? How will you identify if the third nerve is involved in the fasciculi in the midbrain? So there are many third nerve fasciculi. Uh, before they become yeah. the third nerve, the, these fasciculi, they go through the midbrain pedangle. So if the midbrain pedangle also has the corticospinal tract, so you have ipsilateral third nerve palsy and contralateral hemiparesis. This is known by a very classical syndrome. Any, everybody will know this syndrome, anybody? Um, Weber's syndrome, okay? Weber's syndrome, okay. Yeah, so you so, have third nerve fascicle, fascicles getting involved. Nuclear third nerve, nuclear third nerve, bilateral ptosis would be there. Bilateral ptosis, this is a classical feature and I can explain how this happens. On the other hand, third nerve fasciculi getting involved, uh, you, can have, you can have involvement of the midbrain pitangle also. This, this uh, involves hemiparesis on one side, okay? And yeah. then the, in the subarachnoid space, the third nerve is uh, <clears throat> third nerve is between the superior cerebellar artery and the posterior P1. So uh, aneurysms at the P1 and superior cerebellar artery, these are very, very rare. They can cause third nerve palsy or the third nerve goes along parallel to the PCOM. So you can have a PCOM aneurysm and then you, you can have a third nerve palsy. We recently had a patient who had a third nerve palsy like that. And then the third nerve goes. So inside the cavernous sinus, if there is a third nerve palsy, you can have involvement of three, four, and six generally. So a third nerve palsy completely involving three, four, six with a frozen eye is a cavernous segment. Sometimes you can have a third nerve palsy inside the globe. So what happens in the globe, you have a superior branch and an inferior branch. So sometimes only partial third nerve palsy is there. So we, and you have to differentiate it, of course, from a nuclear third nerve, but otherwise you can uh, classify the third nerve palsy into the superior and inferior branch, okay? So you have to see what levator palpebrae superior is, is involved or not. So that will be the superior branch and then the inferior branch. So you can localize the third nerve in the nuclear part. You can, uh, you can localize it at the fascicles. You can localize it in the subarachnoid space where it, uh, where it is in the interpeduncular space. You can uh, localize it in the uh, subarachnoid space where it is medial to the temporal lobe. That is why when temporal lobe herniation happens, 
you can have third nerve palsy. You can have it. Um, you can have it when you have a, um, a picomaneurysm. You can have it in the intracavernous segment. You can have it in the superior orbital fissure, and you can have it inside the globe. So all these is uh, localization for the third nerve. And uh, you should also understand that uh, the sympathetic fibers are carried in the superolateral part of the third nerve. That is why when there is a herniation, you will have this, uh, this only this part. So pupillary dilatation happens first and then the complete third nerve palsy happens. And the vascular supply of this third nerve is also different. So that is why in medical third nerve palsy versus surgical third nerve palsy happens. Uh, you, should, you should read this up, okay? So this is homework for you since you gave this question. Of course, the answer yeah. is posterior communicating artery. You should also know the localization of the third nerve uh, with respect to different places, okay? Uh, you must always understand that- Thank you so much, that... Prof. No, 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 no problem. You must always understand that uh, a neurosurgeon is a surgical neurologist. So you must very, very clearly know how to localize lesions, okay? Yeah. Exactly. So this right. question was, was testing, as you clearly indicated, we, we, we needed to know the course of the third nerve and the nerve components and the organization of the fibers. And as you said it, um, the parasympathetic fibers are the ones that control the pupillary dilatation and they are located in the dorsal superficial aspect of the nerve. So that's why the, yes. the rest of the palsy is preceded by the parasympathetic component. And that can happen only if the if the lesion is in the subarachnoid space as as you as yes. you said it so um, thank you for the very clear explanation if it's medical as you said it's usually uh, nuclear level and it's seen in diabetic neuropathies atherosclerosis uh, 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 pathologies related to uh, vascular and autoimmune that will cause a nuclear pathology uh, this is the cavernous. That is because the supralateral explain. part of the third nerve is supplied by the meningeal arteries, and these don't get involved in medical conditions. And yeah. while the other part of the third nerve gets involved in medical conditions, and this is why it is pupillary sparing palsy. Yeah. So thank you very much for that good explanation. This is what is causing this gentleman's palsy. It's posterior communicating uh, artery aneurysm which is almost in all cases pointing laterally and inferiorly. Remember the PCOM is located medially and superiorly to the, to the third nerve. So when there is a, an expansion of an aneurysm of the PCOM, it usually causes a third nerve palsy. And in this case, the fibers that are affected initially are the, as Prof has explained, the parasympathetic, parasympathetic fibers. So the answer, is of course, we've already been told, is, is the PCOM, PCOM aneurysm. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you and, so much. Uh, yeah. In fact, I, I operated on one of these cases and I showed it on neurosurgery TV maybe maybe two or three weeks ago. And I, I had to go and uh, uh, I had to cut the 10 because this, this aneurysm was um, inferiorly, uh, inferior to the 10. The PCOM was inferior to the 10. So it is a ruptured aneurysm. So I had to cut the tent and very slowly and then identify the third nerve, identify the PCOM and then clip it. I'm sure it is, uh, this video is in the archives. So you can see that it'll become much more clearer to you. So uh, Thank you we so will much. keep on doing this. I, I'm really enjoying this discussion and I hope Summer comes and uh, talks something about uh, this uh, case or something that he was going to discuss, uh, Summer. Uh, I will not take up time anymore. So please uh, go ahead and discuss, please. I'm ready, thank you. I, uh, can I comment on the uh, last uh, uh, figure? Please, uh, uh, Dr. Abdul Fattah. Yes, uh, please, you want uh, me to share the screen again? The PCOM aneurysm compressing the third nerve? Yes. Uh, yes. The figure. Uh, okay. Uh, yes. Here. Yes. I'm just uh, commenting on that. This is uh, uh, not the common PCOM aneurysm because the PCOM aneurysm uh, is the uh, commonly originated from the antenna carotid just beside uh, the origin of posterior communicating artery. 
Here it's a, a rare form called a pure or a true PCOM aneurysm, where the aneurysm originated from the posterior communicating branch. Do you get the idea? Yeah. I think it's, it's not under focus of the uh, topic uh, or, or while illustrating this uh, uh, figure, but this is not the common uh, PCOM. The common PCOM originated from the ICA, from the antenna carotid artery. And here it's similar to the origin of the of the PCOM. It's just it's uh, beside the origin, but it's uh, okay. uh, ICA aneurysm. It's not a PCOM, P, uh, pure PCOM aneurysm. And this figure, it's a rare form called a pure PCOM aneurysm or true PCOM aneurysm, where the aneurysm originated from the posterior communicating artery rather than okay. from the antenna carotid artery. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much, Samar. Um, I'm ready, uh, Prof. Ipe and uh, John. It's up to you. John? Uh, yeah, Samar. Samar, okay, yeah. very good. Thank you very much. Let me introduce you, Samar, okay? So we'll make a separate video of this. Hi, this is John Bennett from Neurosurgical TV. We have another lecture and daily dose of neurosurgery education. We have well-known neurosurgery educator from Iraq who's done a few webcasts with us, uh, Samer Hose. He's, uh, he's also a big teacher in Iraq. A couple of the students here on the panel. Before I turn it over to Samer, let's go through the panel to introduce everyone. Hello, Zolo, are you there? Uh, hello, Dr. Ben. Hello, everyone. It's a pleasure being here. I'm Zolo Ivan. I'm a CPA medical student from Cameroon. It's welcome, a pleasure to be here. Welcome, Zolo. Stuart Portilla, are you there, Stuart? <clears throat> Perhaps not. Musendo? Musendo? I'm not having too much. Perhaps I should. Uh, okay, does anyone want to introduce themselves, please, on the panel? If not, we'll just move on. Okay, Samer, why don't we just move on? Okay, and welcome and thank you. Hi, John. Hi, everyone. I'm Samer Hoz. I'm a vascular neurosurgeon from Iraq. Um, I think it's not a, a formal way of presenting a neurosurgical topic. This is a, more on a, like a daily discussion. And uh, now we are doing in the neurosurgical TV. I think that's the advantage. So I will uh, start uh, my presentation upside down from the last part, according to uh, Dr. Abdel uh, Fattah, uh, last uh, discussion at the end of our lecture. So Dr. Abdel Fattah, uh, uh, I will uh, start at the uh, end of uh, uh, Professor I lecture where he discuss uh, or you uh, show uh, a nice uh, question uh, with illustration about uh, how the posterior communicating artery compressing the third nerve. And uh, Professor Ayyip discussed the type of third nerve uh, pulsy and, and its localization. Um, I will start the screen share. Okay, perfect. Okay. I, I will skip the initial uh, case and go to this slide uh, directly. So uh, for, uh, uh, for a description of this uh, CT angiography image, this is the um, um, uh, uh, ICA, internal carotid artery. This is the uh, cavernous part, this is the supraclinoid part, and this is the carotid bifurcation into MCA and A1, ACA. And this is aneurysm, bilobed complex aneurysm with Murphy T directing posterior laterally, and this is a posterior communicating artery aneurysm. The other side, ICA, bifurcation, A1, M1, and here the anterior communicating with the A2s. So this is just to give you an uh, um, 
uh, orientation about uh, the an operative video I will show now. And actually, I have many questions. Uh, till now, I am not sure about uh, what are these uh, or what are the real answers for them. And I want to discuss and I want to put it online for further discussion. Uh, so this is a posterior communicating artery uh, aneurysm by lobe directed posterior lateral. And I will go direct to the video and please tell me if it's available. John. Yes. I yeah, we can see it. Yes, it we can see it. Beautiful picture. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is what I uh, always uh, called the upside down anatomy. Let's get some orientation. Uh, I hope the pointer, my pointer is there. Do you see it clearly? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So this is a left uh, terrional approach going uh, to the deep sylvian part. And here is the optic nerve and uh, left optic nerve, left internal carotid artery, the supraclinoid ICA. And here's the bifurcation of ICA into A1, which goes above the chiasm and M1 goes to the sylvian fissure. So this is the general orientation left terrional, this is the left optic, left supraclinoid ICA, and A1, left A1, and left M1. And here's the aneurysm, just a big aneurysm. Uh, on the um, anatomical illustration, always you think that there is a third nerve here, and uh, till now it's not illustrated. Um, I will proceed with the video. Please just tell me if it's working. Is it okay? Yes. Yes, it is. Okay. So I will stop again and ask my first question. Uh, anybody recognize this structure? Pituitary. No? Pituitary, pituitary what? Stock. The pituitary stock. Pituitary stock. Perfect. So uh, is it in, uh, of normal size? Looks big. Isn't it? Uh, actually, the supraclinoid ICA, there is a, a vasospasm. You can recognize that, that the, yeah. there is a vasospasm in the supraclinoid. However, uh, uh, the uh, largest um, thickness of the pituitary stalk will be about, do you know the number around how much? It's more related to the MCQs. The size of the stock in yes. relation to the size of the distal ICA? Um, usually the, the, the number recorded uh, in the uh, box, it's a uh, three millimeter. Larger than three millimeter, you can uh, consider the causes of uh, hypertrophied or increased thickness of pituitary stock, like hypophysitis and other causes. So in this figure, you can sure that this is m larger than three millimeter because it's a, a three millimeter or more. Uh, that's a, a my question that uh, sometimes it's difficult to um, get the idea what's this large structure. Sometimes if you get a lateral projection through terrional, you can see the other ICA, which is usually at this big size. So here, as Dr. Abdel Fattah said perfectly, this is the pituitary stalk. The pathology here, or the finding here, it's a thickened pituitary stalk, larger th than three millimeter. And I will put an open question, why it is thickened? The patient is uh, healthy, wealthy, sudden severe headache uh, with a subarachnoid hemorrhage. Is it related or not to the subarachnoid hemorrhage? Is it uh, a cause or maybe an, uh, another pathology? But I think this is an important operative finding. Another question before the section I have is what's this structure? What do you expect to have here? What's this branch or artery? Any idea? Oh. 
One, two, three. Okay, I will put, <laughs> I will put it on open question. Okay. Uh, let's let's see with the video. So uh, here, uh, after exposure of the aneurysm, we start to dissect the neck. And if you uh, can see, there is a bulging here. It's the posterior communicating artery origin. It's just below the dissector. It's just a bulge, okay. small bulge, and you will see it more with the uh, dissections. Yes, this is the the purple oh, that's one. That's the beginning of the... the. Yes, this oh. is the origin of PCOM as it goes posteriorly. So okay. our idea is to clip above it, and here the dissection is more uh, important. Also, or it's it is important that there is a two category of branches, a small, few small branches. If you see it, I will show it again. This this is small branch. Is it a anterior choroidal or not? I think it's smaller to be considered anterior choroidal. And another branch just deep to the aneurysmal sac. And actually I get uh, deep in the um, anatomy books. It's a difficult one. What what you should consider this is is that an anterior choroidal or is that usually it's a double vessel oriented laterally, and I think more with that this vessel is the uh, anterior choroidal artery and these smaller branches maybe other or accessory anterior choroidal, but we okay. see see them uh, commonly while dealing with PCOM aneurysm. You will see now the next step. I will uh, speed up the video a little bit. More dissection. Try to put a clip after freeing the neck of aneurysm. And here, as you put the clip, I, 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 uh, I think in my mind, it should be higher than this. The PCOM, that's the most important step, should be yeah. higher than the origin of PCOM. But at the same time, it should be deep enough to clip all the neck. I will go back to the normal speed just to finish the clip. If you compare this clipping with the, the clipping I did of PCOM maybe before three months, it's totally different. The time I take before applying the clip and know, knowing the anatomy is totally different. So it's a releasing a moment when the aneurysm gets very smaller. So you think in your mind, okay, I will control it. And now you should ask yourself the next question. Where is the PCOM? Here is the PCOM. You can find it. Okay, the clip is okay. above PCOM. And what is this one? Let's see in detail. Do you see the other branch? This one? Yes, deep there. Yes. Yes. So I decide to dissect uh, the neck because I want to see the origin of this artery, if it, if it from the aneurysm or not. It looks like it's from the aneurysm neck and I already clipped it. So I will start to release the aneurysm uh, uh, sac, and this is a nice one. Do you, do you um, notice this thick structure? This one in the top left, just fibrous structure. Yes, the, no, this one, the white one. Yeah. You will uh, find, uh, just focus on it and see what will appear on the next steps. I will speed up a little. Just dissecting from, uh, the aneurysm sac from the medial temporal. Cutting confidently, yes. The uh, arachnoid bands, the adhesion bands, and what's this? Again, to the next, uh, to the same oh. question. Oh yeah, this, that will this be is the your... third note. 
Yes, your friend. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's, uh, yeah. I think, very nice uh, illustration of what's the yeah. real re relation of PCOM aneurysm with the third nerve and how the PCOM or why the PCOM causing third nerve palsy. Yes, <laughs> look at this. It's, it's a really yeah. compressing lesion to the third nerve. And I think I will take my time while dissecting, just maybe because I want to see the third nerve all free. And uh, you can see how, how small now the aneurysm uh, oh, sac. Yes, yeah. it, it, it gives you more confidence that you are in the right pathway. So, yes, you can see the deep bands between the third nerve and this artery, which I think that mostly it's the choroidal artery. You need a little bit of focus, yes. You can, uh, for the surgeons doing such surgery, they know at this moment that I am using a foot switch because both hands within the field and I change the focus and zoom during surgery. So that's the real importance of a foot switch for controlling focus and zoom, and zoom at these uh, deep uh, dissections. If you, um, let me get this, uh, yes. You can check now the a structure will appear at the bifurcation. Yes. You see this one? This is also a small branch, mostly a perforator from the uh, 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 tip of internal carotid artery. Also came, came from the posterior surface. It's preserved. And again, I go back to this branch. Here I put in my mind that the surgery has a, a, a nice course till now, but why not? Let's preserve this. A branch because I already clip it to at the end of a clip. So step number one, to clip uh, the other part of the sac of aneurysm. And after to be on the safe side, because usually this is the rupture uh, point, if you can remember the pre-op uh, CT angio. Yeah. And now I will release the clip on the neck this uh, it's a permanent clip, but on the while dealing with the PCOM, or I, I told my friends that all the clips are temporary while dealing with PCOM. I means it will not block the PCOM artery. And uh, I open it. Just a moment, and the aneurysm neck fold again. That's what I mean that all the clips are temporary for the PCOM because it's a large pathology. Here okay. again, more, more dissections to just localize the origin of this presumed uh, anterior choroidal artery. You should take your time, what I will did now and uh, what's the best and what's the safest, the most important to be safe. And here I decide to uh, clip like 90% uh, of the neck and the leave and leave the f last few millimeters to, to get the blood to this branch only. And you can see it now clearly. So you can see the angle left. Now I will go full zoom. Yes, I, I leave just this angle, not clipped, just to give a blood to this branch. And you can see it's, uh, uh, it's color. I think it, uh, it was uh, whitish for a few seconds and now it's red again. And the limitation, I should say this is the perfect time to do ICG to see if it, uh, it's uh, functioning or not. But unfortunately, we don't have ICG at that moment. We will have on the next uh, months. And uh, finally, just a few touches. If you, if you try to kill someone, kill him elegantly. 
<laughs> That's good. <laughs> yes, it's like the finish uh, in the games. <laughs> Perfect. And uh, that's it. Uh, just uh, to uh, show you how is the brain uh, minimum attraction because opening of arachnoid and uh, temporal lobe clear, frontal lobe clear. It's the left side, so we are over the Broca's area and everything is clear. Very good. Wow. Okay. Um, I think this is uh, part uh, number one, and part two may be a smaller part of uh, my presentation. Uh, uh, I will go back to the uh, initial topic that I declared. Is it a full screen now? Yes, it's, it's good. Okay. So uh, it's a project uh, of uh, case reports. It's a very rare uh, case. I'm writing it as a research. And at the same time, I want to ask uh, colleagues and uh, uh, teachers, seniors, about uh, their idea, what's the next step of management? Because actually I don't find any resource about it and um, I need a discussion or feedback about what to do. It's a pseudo aneurysm. I mean, uh, iatrogenic aneurysm of supraclinoid carotid artery uh, after anterior communicating artery uh, aneurysm clipping. Uh, as, um, as always, I start my presentation with this slide that we are nothing without our teachers and we are shown fully inferior to them if we do not advance beyond them and uh, I in the center. So it's a simple case of uh, subarachnoid hemorrhage, more in the anterior interhemispheric fissure, sylvian, carotid uh, uh, cisterns, so CT angio showing the carotid artery. I think uh, I will enjoy <laughs> uh, des describing this, but just uh, to give you a point, uh, Dr. Abdel Fattah, uh, from uh, exam point of view, if you are going to uh, describe such thing in exams, especially in the oral viva, you should escape uh, naming classification. You should e escape uh, giving number to the segments. Okay. Okay. The best way is to give the name of the segment because no one will argue with you about cavernous segment. No one will argue with you about supraclinoid segment, about uh, lateral segment, petra segment, whatever. It's about the location. Okay. You can get escape from classification because it's an endless story. Uh, the endoscopic uh, 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 way of thinking have their classification. The macroscopic have their way. The vascular have their way. So always stick to the um, uh, names and, uh, uh, and the related structure. And I give a very nice example of uh, that, the clival segment, the uh, uh, paracellular segment, and uh, the cavernous, I mean, and the supraclinoid. Uh, I have just one uh, objection on the uh, IP classification that, uh, in my opinion, while describing the artery, C1, should be the cervical because it's artery. And I found this, I found this difficulty uh, uh, while I, I'm describing to us, uh, he, he said that uh, C5, uh, C4 go up to C5. And this is a controversy. Uh, usually, uh, sorry, C5 go to uh, a C6 or like this. I mean, uh, we are dealing with artery, better to give the smaller number from the proximal and the starting C1 cervical, C2 petrus, C3 clival, C4 cavernous, and C5 supraclinoid. That's my uh, opinion. Otherwise, it's very interesting uh, way to classify, to classify the carotid, and it requires deep knowledge of anatomy and surgical anatomy. So, uh, here is the uh, carotid. This is the cavernous horizontal segment, supraclinoid carotid. And this is the clinoid process, anterior clinoid process. And this is the supraclinoid carotid and bifurcation into M1 
M2 and A1. This is the A2 and this is anterior communicating artery aneurysm. Uh, I put this, it's not very clear, but I, I want something from putting this structure. That this is the anterior surface of ICA. This is the anterior surface of sup supraclinoid ICA. You can see it, it's very, very, very clear surface. And this is the bifurcation. And here is the icon. For, for those uh, seeking uh, discussion, uh, if you see aneurysm in this direction, it's uh, uh, the uh, roton rolls. We call it the rotten rules that usually the opposite A1 is a smaller. Yes, U usually the aneurysm uh, goes with the direction of the mid of the larger A1, and this is okay. And uh, usually you will open in this side, whereas the A1 is the dominant. So your proximal uh, temporary clipping is will be more safe. So this is the uh, video. Please tell me if it's working. Yes, it is. I will stop the sound, although it's played by one of our resident. <laughs> oh, nice. oh, we don't mind the music. <laughs> <laughs> That's beautiful. Uh, yes, but it will uh, take some focusing from the uh, operative video. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Maybe more interesting. Uh, uh, I, actually, uh, while putting uh, this music, I remember, uh, I think the uh, Pro Professor Spitzler uh, write in the introduction of the seven aneurysm uh, book for Michael Lawton. He said that aneurysm uh, uh, surgery is like a ballet dancing while the AVM surgery is like a, a war and uh, 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 like a battle. So uh, while putting this music and see the soft dissections, it's more goes with ballet, <laughs> but it's not, it's not always a ballet dancing. <laughs> because, because as a surgeon, uh, while doing aneurysm, one thing in my mind only, is that please don't rupture, please don't rupture until the end of surgery. Yeah. So um, this is a section of the supraclinoid carotid again. Uh, this is the A1 going above the chiasm. I will speed up a little. Yes. Left terrional, left optic, left carotid here hidden. And now putting a retraction, uh, frontal retractor, just above this large artery, which is the A1. I think it's clear now. Uh, here, sorry. Left optic, left carotid. Please remove the cotinoid. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. This is the uh, supraclinoid carotid bifurcation. You can see how clear is the supraclinoid carotid. And this is A1 and just crossing the chiasm. It's a normal uh, surgery, just to skip some steps. This is widening of at the end of A1. So here as a surgeon, I will think that this direction should be the A2 and this direction is the uh, ACOM and here is the aneurysm. But still you don't go to the aneurysm directly. You should check all the anatomy around you. And here we are doing undermining of the a1 just to prepare it for a future temporary clipping if there is a rupture. Again, the section of the neck. It's, uh, I don't like the A comb here. Just to try to put a clip, but it's a failure trial because, because I feel it's not free underneath the clip blades. The area is still not free. So I took uh, time and doing more dissections, more release. And for me now, this dissector with the vas dissector is the most important step to undermine, underline the aneurysm. Now in pens, um, I, I just show where I will put the clip. And in the preoperative planning, I said to my uh, colleagues that I will leave a residual neck in this aneurysm because it's, uh, uh, this aneurysm have two bulge, one inferior bulge and one superior bulge. You can see this bulge here and another one in the posterior part or in the 
uh, behind uh, our vision. And that one is the rupture one. That one is the uh, need more clipping. So I will show you just the final clipping. Yes, please take your time. The left side terrenal approach for, for surgeons, it's, it's difficult because now if you focus, you can see that I put the clip with the left hand and this is not the uh, likely one to put because I'm a right-handed. So it's a difficult uh, uh, situation. The right side better for sure for us. And actually for the patient also left side have a risk for a speech affection. Take time, put the blades deep enough. And you chose and the, the left side because uh, the left A1 was the dominant yes, artery. Yes. Yes. And this is the A2. You can see the A2. That's important. And this is the other A2. That's what you think about. Yes, you can see here is the A2 contralateral. Here is the A2 epsilateral. That's the most important step to preserve the distal circulation. And now it's clipped. Very nice edge shape. A1, A1 contralateral, A2 epsilateral, A2, A2 contralateral. A small bleeding, usually from a small perforator, just, or maybe a nearby annoying vein, just to make you uh, scare, oh, maybe this is a, an intraoperative rupture or early step of intraoperative rupture. That's usual. And again, <laughs> try to kill it. <laughs> and I think for surgeons, this is the most uh, important view to see the A2 very clear on both sides. And you, you can see the, uh, um, the aneurysmal sac sh uh, shrink with uh, clipping and further cutary. Here is the... Uh, uh, Residual neck, if you can see it, I try to put a clip on it, but I don't for, uh, find a, a good size for for this, that uh, neck. So I leave it because it's on the opposite side of the ruptured point and I will try to put a crash muscle. That's the edge shape, the beautiful edge shape, A1, A1 and other A2s. And here we put a crushed muscle. Some surgeons like it, some others don't like it. Just to adhere to the uh, clip on the uh, previous aneurysm location to prevent any further possibility for rupture. And some surgeon. This is ACOM, so you can uh, tell that it's a different approach. It's a lateral supraorbital approach or mini terrional approach, we use it for the ACOM rather than the usual terrional. Here is, what's this step? Cutting the optic? Uh, laminar terminalis fenestration. Actually, uh, I, I did uh, laminar terminalis fenestration and the liquid membrane fenestration in all cases, mostly in all cases, uh, to prevent post-operative hydro and uh, shunt dependent hydro. So you can see clear, this is the third ventricle opened now. And uh, it's the end of the surgery, yes. Carotid bifurcation, A1, clipping and the optic. Everything is clear and out. This is, this is lateral supraorbital, more frontal, but maybe the opening is wide. Okay, so the point till now is not here. Uh, I will go back to the slides. This one is uh, the po initial post-op CT scan. Uh, 
it's okay. No hematoma, no compression, few subdural collection, aerosol, and how deep is the clip? This is the um, craniotomy. We, we obligate to do some subtemporal craniectomy here to give access because uh, I usually use anterior temporal lobe mobilization in most of the procedure. And here is uh, the clip. Um, the aim of the presentation is at this point. Uh, if you uh, notice that this is the basilar, basilar bifurcation into P1, P1, supracerebellar, supracerebellar. This is the carotid, the cavernous, supraclinoid, A1, M1. Again, carotid bifurcation, A1, M1. This is the dominant, this is non dominant. This is the preserved A2, which is very nice after clipping. No residual neck can, can be seen. That's very nice, and we are lucky for it. And the problem is, what's this? This is very, very, very unusual. Is that aneurysm? Is that an artifact? There is a bulge from the anterior surface of carotid, and I told, told you while uh, uh, giving the presentation that see the anterior surface of carotid again, see the anterior surface of carotid again, whether in the CT angio, whether intraoperatively, it's a clear anterior surface. And now in the post-op angio, we get uh, shocked by this bulging. So what's this? Um, this is the MEP CT angio. Sorry. This is the uh, MEP images on the CT angio showing that it's not an artifact. It's a bulging from the anterior surface of carotid. This is even in the transverse and the axial view. Yes, this, there is a small bulge from the anterior carotid, supraclinoid carotid. It's not a site for any aneurysm. And yes, you can see this now. This is the carotid just to give our orientation. Left ICA. This is the clinoid, clinoid, this is the supraclinoid ICA, bifurcation into A1, A2, M1, M2. And here from the anterior surface, there is a new aneurysm. Um, uh, if you want to describe it, it's not present in the pre-op, not present intraoperatively. So for sure, it's a pseudo aneurysm, a traumatic aneurysm, appears after the surgery, maybe from the manipulation, I don't know. We don't manipulate the supraclinoid carotid anterior surface. It's usually uh, free here. And uh, I, I told you that it's uh, iatrogenic. It's uh, um, but after I did the surgery or I did the dissection, there is a new aneurysm. So it's a pseudo aneurysm, iatrogenic. Um, but uh, I have two questions with no answers. Why? I don't know why. Because the pseudoaneurysm, it's not the common uh, mechanism to originate from dissections. And actually, it's a, a common aneurysm, not carotid aneurysm. It's away from dissections. So why it occur? I don't have answer. And uh, the other important point is what to do at this step. Uh, this uh, patient operated uh, I think till now it's uh, 13 days ago and uh, it's now uh, we are under quarantine of uh, Corona in Iraq in Baghdad especially we uh, don't have uh, uh, any movement doing only, only urgent surgery and the patient at home now with this pseudo aneurysm already to rupture should I send for him and operate again and what I will do inside the surgery, it's not a usual aneurysm to clip it. Maybe small clip with wrapping, I don't know. Should I consider endovascular procedure? We don't have endovascular therapeutic endovascular in Iraq, and there is no way to travel uh, at this situation all over the world. Uh, so till now I keep him uh, in his room, double quarantine, quarantine because of aneurysm and the quarantine because of uh, corona. And uh, I need opinions and feedback. Mm, sorry. 
Um, that's it. Um, thank you. Okay, very good. Uh, let me get back on the screen here. Uh, I was posting on the neurosurgery coach. Uh, excellent, Sam. You answered the question. I was going to ask you, what's it like working there now? I guess you're going to have a lot of time to teach, hopefully. Uh, uh, so you're not doing any elective surgery now, right? Neurosurgery in Iraq? Uh, only top emergency surgeries. Right. So are you spending a lot of time at home uh, or are you at the hospital? According to your uh, duties, majority uh, for uh, surgeons uh, at home, for residents at hospital. Oh, okay. Well, you're welcome to do as, as many uh, webcasts as you want if you have nothing to do. Uh, and, and we're going to do this every day. So certainly uh, you're welcome to do as many as you wish. So uh, any comments? Uh, there's a couple of people. Marco, hello. Uh, I don't know if you met Samar. Uh, it's recorded. Summer, um, thank you very much for your presentation. It was absolutely a beautiful surgery. Uh, and I, I, I appreciate you. I like the problem of the left peritoneal uh, approach for people with his uh, right hand. Uh, as uh, Yazargi said, Yazargi was able to do both the right and left hand. He uh, trained himself uh, using, uh, like example, the fork to hit uh, sometimes with the right hand, sometimes with the left hand. So he's absolutely <laughs> interested for this. Uh, about this uh, um, pseudo aneurysm of a, a um, ICA, actually, is a uh, very unusual, very unusual. Mm, uh, <laughs> I I don't know how I. Mm, what uh, could I suggest for this? Mm, I think uh, uh, it's preferable to see a new uh, angel CT within a short time, mm, maybe two months, I guess, and see if there is an increase. If there is an increasing, uh, obviously surgery is mandatory. Um, that's, that's actually my opinion, but I don't have any experience, so just uh, uh, take it like it uh, could be my advice. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Marco. Actually, uh, yes, uh, that's uh, my plan uh, to uh, maybe over the next week, I will do a new MRA and CTA uh, mm -hmm. because I think this type of aneurysm is not forgiving. I don't think it will increase in size, either rupture or not. But just to make sure of its uh, existence, I, I, I still have, have some hope that it may disappear, like it uh, appear all of a uh, sudden. And uh, a point I don't know if I mentioned or not, this CT angio is um, uh, one week after the surgery. That's uh, add uh, more um, uh, rarity to the case. It's one week after the surgery, the patient healthy, wealthy, everything everything is okay. And oops, there's aneurysm with a long one, not not a very small, maybe it's of three millimeter on like this. Mm. Yeah. Okay, Wang, do you have any comments? Are you there, Wang, from China? Neurosurgeon from China. Wang, are you there? Perhaps he stepped away. Uh, any other comments or commentary for uh, Samer from the panel? <clears throat> Come on, folks, bail me out. <laughs> <laughs> I like that music, Samer. That was that was kind of nice, uh, nice way. Maybe we maybe we can run it again with just the, <laughs> with just just the music. We won't concentrate on the surgery. <laughs> Uh, actually, uh, we have a, a resident called uh, Dr. Mustafa Adnan. Uh, uh, he's uh, playing uh, guitar very well. And uh, I asked him to give me uh, small uh, audios to, uh, to add for each video. Oh, that's nice. That's very mm. nice. We, we welcome <laughs> that. <laughs> so anyways, uh, any comments or closing uh, questions or whatever? Okay, well, thanks everybody for coming and thank you, Samar, especially. 
And we look forward to hearing from you, hopefully as many as you want, you can do these because a lot of neurosurgeons are at home now. <laughs> it's unusual, unusual for neurosurgeons to be at home. <laughs> so, so thanks everybody. And I'm gonna end thank this so podcast. Much, okay, thank you. I'm just gonna stop recording. I'm gonna hang out, thanks. Yeah, thank you. So what is the topic for tomorrow? Yeah, I, 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 just, I, I don't know. Uh, I just text Ike and ask them. And I'll let you know. Okay. Uh, I'll post it as soon. All right. Please daily, do. daily dose number two. Now take your medicine. Daily dose. Take your medicine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Sure. Thanks, everybody. Yeah. Bye. Thank you so much. Bye. Okay, bye.